Hello, my name is Miguel Isidoro and I'm a SharePoint consultant at Create IT in Portugal and I'm a proud member of the European SharePoint community. Today I will be talking to you about Content Organizer in SharePoint 2013. This is a feature which is not enabled by default in, Sh in a SharePoint site and for you to enable it you will have to go to the site settings page, to the site features page and enable the Content Organizer feature. Once you do that, you will notice a new document library in your SharePoint site, which is called the Dropoff Library, which uh, will be like an entry point where all documents will be uploaded to so that it can, they can be processed by Content Organizer. If you go to the Set Settings page, will you will also notice two new settings, which are the Content Organizer Settings page and the Content Organizer Rules page. Take a look at the Content Organizer Settings page. The first option will require users to be redirected to the drop-off library, document library. Every time the user submits content to a document library that has Content Organizer rules. If this is disabled, uh, Content Organizer will be bypassed and users will be able to use the document library in a regular way. The second option here will allow rules to specify another site as the target location. This means that content can be moved to another site. As you know, SharePoint has a 5000 threshold in document libraries or lists. This means that if you have a document library view with more than 5000 items, the view will start to have performance issues. To address this, folder partitioning will allow you to automatically create uh, a subfolder every time a multiple of this value here is reached. The folder name will have the name that you specified here, uh, a prefix followed by a dynamic value which is the creation, the, the, the creation date of the folder. The following option, duplicate submissions, will allow you to define how duplicate submissions are handled. SharePoint versioning is the default option, and if it is enabled, and in, if in the target document library SharePoint versioning is enabled, a new version of the document will be created. The second option will append a unique character to the end of, of the duplicate file name. Also, if you enable SharePoint versioning, and in if the target location you don't have SharePoint versioning enabled, the second option will be used. Preserving context option will allow uh, Content Organizer to save the original properties of the document every time a new document is submitted. And the Rules Manager, finally, the last option, which is new in SharePoint 2013, will allow as to define rule managers to be notified every time documents are left in the drop-off library, meaning that uh, any of the content organizer rules are being matched. This way, uh, content organizer managers will be able to correct the content organizer rules and address this issue. Here you can define how many days to wait before sending these notifications. Take a look at the Content Organizer Rules page and let's add some rules. The first one, I will call it Expense Reports. I will base it on the Expense Report content type and I will say that every time a new document of this content type is submitted, I will uh, move it to another location I will show you the target, the target location option in a minute. When I uh, choose the content type, a new condition is automatically added to the conditions list, uh, which is based on the content type property. I can add other uh, conditions to uh, the rule, but uh, in this example, I will only use uh, the content type uh, property based uh, condition. Let's define the expense report document library as the destination 
and I am being shown this message which says that the expense report is not associated with the target location um, document library. To address this, let's add the expense report to the document library. Let's go to the library settings, to the advanced settings. Let's allow the management of content items in the library and let's add the expense report content type to the library. Now if we try to add the expense report document library as a target location, the error is not shown. Now let's add another rule. I will call it invoices and I will base it in a second content type I have previously created it's called invoice the rule will be similar to the to the first one and I will select the invoices document library as the destination the error is not shown because the invoices document library has already the invoice content type associated and here we have two content organizer rules uh, defined so, if I go to the drop-off library and I upload a new document, let's upload the expense report document, and now if I choose the expense report doc content type, the document has automatically been moved to the expense reports document library. If I now perform the same action to this invoice document and if I choose the invoice as the content type and I submit the document, the content organizer will automatically move the invoice to the invoices document library. And if you take a look at the expense reports document library. Here we have the expense report document and if we take a look at the invoices document library here we have the invoice document. Thank you. Uh, I hope this session has been useful and uh, I see you next time.